Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about inheritance in C Sharp. Now, inheritance is basically a technique that we can use in C Sharp where we can have one class inherit all of the functionality of another class. So I can define something called a super class, and then I can actually create classes that are going to inherit all the functionality from that super class called subclasses. So I'm just going to give you guys a very basic introduction into inheritance. This is a huge subject and there's a lot that you can kind of get into with inheritance. So I just want to show you guys like the basic concept of what's happening with it. So over here in my program, I created a class. It's called chef.cs. And this is a class that basically like represents a chef in our program. So you can see here class chef. And this chef has uh, three methods that it can use. So the first one here is called make chicken. And basically all this does is it prints out um, the chef makes chicken, right? So the chef can make chicken. The chef can also make salad. So it says the chef makes salad and the chef can also make a special dish. So it just says the chef makes barbecue ribs. So this is a, you know, a pretty cool class. It's obviously a very simple class, but it's, um, you know, it can basically represent a chef in our program. So down here in my program.cs, in my main method, I created a chef object and it's just called chef. And then I basically just said chef.makechicken. So I'm telling the chef to make some chicken. And when I run my program now, it's going to say the chef makes chicken, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, you know, I just have this chef class over here and I defined some methods in there and then I created an object of the chef class and told it to make chicken. Now I want to show you guys how we can use inheritance to make a, another type of class. So let's say that in addition to having just a normal chef like we defined over here, I also wanted to have a more specialized type of chef. So I wanted to represent not, just, not only just a general chef in my program, but also a more specialized chef. So let's say I'll come up here and I'm going to say project, add class, and I'm going to create a class called Italian Chef. So Italian Chef is not just going to be a normal chef. He's going to be a Italian chef. And I'm going to go ahead and create this class. So you'll see over here we have this class Italian Chef. Now, let's say that this Italian Chef can do everything that the normal chef could do. Right, so this Italian chef is a really awesome chef, and not only can he just cook regular food, but he can also cook like more specifically Italian food. So let's say the Italian chef can do everything that the normal chef can do. So the Italian chef can also make chicken. The Italian chef can also make salad, and the Italian chef can also make a special dish. So the, the Italian chef is very similar to the normal chef, right? He can do everything that the normal chef can do, and he can also do some other stuff as well. One thing I could do to give the Italian chef all of this functionality is I could just copy and I could paste all of these methods over here, right? And so now the Italian chef is able to make chicken, able to make salad, and able to make a special dish, right? But in C Sharp, there's actually something that we can do in a situation like this. So anytime you have a class like Italian chef that can do everything and that has all the same functionality and attributes as another class like this chef class, we can use something called inheritance. And inheritance is basically the process of inheriting all of the functionality, all the attributes, etc., from a class like chef into a class like Italian chef. So what I could do is I could come over here and I could say Italian chef and I can make a colon and I can just say chef. And basically what this means is that the Italian chef is going to inherit all the functionality from the chef class. So now the Italian chef can do everything that the chef class can do. And I'm going to come over here and prove that to you guys. So I'm going to create an Italian chef object. So I'm just going to copy this guy and I'm going to paste this down here and I'm just going to change everything to Italian chef. So I went ahead and changed this to Italian chef. It's called Italian chef. And we said new Italian chef. And now I'm saying Italian chef dot make chicken. Now I'm, I'm calling the make chicken method on the Italian chef object, but you'll notice over here in the Italian chef class declaration, I don't actually have any methods specified. So I didn't specify like a make chicken method or anything like that. But what you'll see is because I inherited all of the functionality from the chef class, I'm actually still able to make chicken with the Italian chef. So when I run my program, you'll see that it says the chef makes chicken and this is that normal chef. 
And then down here, the Italian chef is also able to make chicken because the Italian chef inherited all the functionality from the normal chef. And that's kind of cool. So that's basically what you can do if you have like two classes. And in C-sharp, we would refer to chef as the super class, and we would refer to Italian chef as the subclass. And the subclass is always gonna be inheriting functionality from the super class. So that's just a little terminology. Now, we can actually take this a step further. So let's say that the Italian chef, in addition to being able to make chicken salad and a special dish, can also do something else. So we could add another method in here. I could say like public void, and we'll just call this like make pasta. So in addition to making all that other stuff, the Italian chef can also make pasta. So now this chef can also make pasta and I forgot to put an open and closed parentheses there. So if I was to come over here to my program, I could say Italian chef dot make pasta and the Italian chef is gonna be able to make pasta. So let's run that. And you'll see over here, he's making pasta. But what you'll notice is this normal chef can't make pasta. So if I tried to make pasta on the normal chef, it's not gonna be able to do that. So that's gonna throw an error. And that's because we only define make pasta in the subclass, not in the super class. So that's kind of how that's gonna work out. And I wanna show you guys one more um, thing we can do. So you'll notice over here in my chef class, I have this method, it's called make special dish, right? And the chef is making a special dish of barbecue ribs, right? So this chef's special dish is going to be barbecue ribs. But let's say that the Italian chef doesn't wanna make barbecue ribs as a special dish. So let's say that the Italian chef's special dish is actually like some other type of dish and it's not a barbecue dish. Well, the problem is when I come over here and I say make special dish and I say make special dish, both of these chefs are gonna be making the same special dish. So when I run the program, they're both making barbecue ribs. But remember, I don't want the Italian chef to make barbecue ribs. I want the Italian chef to make something else as their special dish. Well, in a situation like this, I can do something called overriding a method. Overriding a method basically means that I take one of the methods that I've inherited, like this make special dish method, and I override it. So I basically come over here into this Italian chef class and I override the functionality of that method. Now, in order to do this, we're gonna have to do one thing over here in the chef class, and we're gonna have to include this virtual keyword. So you'll notice I already have this in here. So up here on these two methods, it says public void make chicken, public void make salad. But down here on make special dish, I've given it this special keyword, public virtual void make special dish. And when we specify this as virtual, basically that means that this method can be overridden in any subclasses. So when I say virtual, it basically means that subclasses can change the functionality of this method. So I can just copy this method and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it down here. And you'll see here I'm saying public virtual void make special dish. But instead of saying virtual here in the subclass, so I'm in my Italian chef class, I'm gonna say override. And this is basically telling C Sharp that we're gonna override the make special dish method from the super class. And then down here I can change it. So I could say the chef makes, instead of barbecue ribs, why don't we say like chicken parm. So now when the Italian chef makes a special dish, it's gonna be making chicken parm instead of making barbecue ribs. So let's go over here into our program and you'll see I'm still printing out chef.makespecialdish and Italian chef.makespecialdish. When I run the program, they're printing out different special dishes. So the Italian chef successfully overrode the functionality of one of the methods that it inherited from the super class. And that is extremely useful. So those are, three very core concepts in inheritance. So the first is just inheriting all of the functionality from a super class. The second is extending that functionality. So for example, um, in addition to being able to do everything that the normal chef could do, the Italian chef could also make pasta. Um, and then finally, we were able to override one of the functions or one of the methods that we inherited using this override keyword on the subclass and using this virtual keyword on the super class. So that is sort of the basics of inheritance. And like I said, there's 
you know, inheritance is a very complex subject and there's a lot, lot, lot of stuff that you can do with it. But this is kind of just an overview of essentially how it works. So now you kind of have the concepts down in your mind and you can kind of go forward and learn more specific ways to use it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.